Hey there, everybody. Let's do a really extensive midday preview for MLB. Um, there's also hockey today. Uh, all I can say about hockey is watch a really good goaltender, uh, goaltender in Shesterkin for the Rangers play a really good game. And they may or may not beat Carolina, but you know those are one of those games where I kind of bet the under and watch Shesterkin play because when you have a really good goaltender, it's tough to score on them. And hockey playoffs are really exciting. So. That's my quick little statement about hockey. Now, also, I would expect Edmonton to continue. They look strong. I would expect Edmonton to win as well from watching a lot of hockey recently. Now, let's get into baseball, and I'm going to talk about what I'm going to do today in, in broad theory because uh, I was on the phone with the Odds Jam folks today, actually, a little bit, and they're, they're super nice people. And I would say that they, they have their own sports betting tools and stuff, and um, th that's similar to what the algorithm does and certainly looks around for certain outcomes and um, tracks things and stuff like that and has different lines. Like it thinks that the Yankees are about minus 120 on average. There's different sports books, right? So there might be, you can get them. So one of the best places to get them apparently is FanDuel. So when you compare that to what we think is going to happen in that game, we think Nestor Cortez is going to pitch really well and shut down Tampa Bay, and this is like a 5-1 to one game, 4-1, to 5-1, to one, the Yankees win. We'll see um, you know, that that's worth it. The line is correct. So this is one of the games we would focus on today. And I want to talk about all the games one by one and what it spits out because it's saying that there are five teams above a 10% margin. Teams above 10% margin are supposed to win, according to the algorithm. When the algorithm has good days, these teams generally win. You'd have like a four in one day on average on good days. On bad days, you could lose all five of them. I've seen it happen. Um, or anything can happen, but you know, in those, those rare days, it does go, you know, one out of five days, this thing goes five and or better from the top down. So, well, why is it saying that, and what does that mean about the outcomes in this game and how I'm going to micro bet the day or what I'm going to focus on? And I'm going to focus on these five teams winning. Why? Let's look at them. Let's, let's just talk about those games and then finish the video because then you'll see at the end of the night, everything I've bet was, was around a predisposed idea of what was going to happen today. A lot of it in these games, not all, the entire night, because I will bet these other games as well. 300 underdogs on here. I'll spread everything out, but I'm going to focus on these outcomes. So if these teams ever fall behind throughout the night, if Boston starts off the game, right, um, we think they're going to win this game 7-0 to, to zero because Dallas Keuchel cannot pitch very well this year. Uh, that's what he said. He will give up a lot of runs, and Boston will hit. Maybe Chicago gets a little bit more off suit. The weather is like there. But if, if for some reason the White Sox get ahead like 1-2-0 or something in the second inning, I'm absolutely going to be continuing to bet Boston, Boston plus runs, any one of these teams, especially in the top five that go down early, will continue to be bet because we think that the outcome is going to have them on top in this game. So, all right. There's a game starting right now, a little after 12.30. It's a Cubs-Cincinnati game. The algorithm has the Cubs as the third pick of the day. That's one of them that has a margin over 10%. Their pitching is okay, but Cincinnati's pitching is not good. Cincinnati's bullpen has not been good throughout the year. At, at a, some better days more recently, but still trouble. So it says Cubs score a lot of runs, and Cubs win this game. So that's an outcome I'm focusing on on the day. They've got a guy on second with one out on top of the first. So when looking for lines, we're going to see, you know, does it have live lines on uh, on Odds Jam here? I don't know what happens when the game starts if the lines are current. Well, let's find out. Now we got to pay. Well, maybe we'll pay and get that because it's it's interesting to look all over different places. They're not gonna they're gonna fluctuate like crazy on different sites sometimes because as outcomes change midstream, sometimes lines are really, really weird in what they can do. So this is an outcome we're focusing on, is the Cubs winning and scoring runs. Yankees winning, not necessarily a ton of runs in this game, but the Yankees winning, it says the Yankees covering and they're on the road. Colorado Washington thinks a ridiculously high scoring game. So we might focus on the over in this situation instead of betting Colorado. 
The line's not that great. The over-under is set at 8. We think that there's 11 runs in this game if you use the ERAs from this year. How about using the ERAs from last year? This game still has 9.5 or more goal uh, runs, so 8 runs, not a problem. So I, I, I'm going to add the over there. That's, that's a really strong pick. Cleveland and Detroit, low scoring game that Cleveland wins by score, but sorry, that Detroit wins by score, but Cleveland wins by margin under 10% margin. It means it slightly thinks that Cleveland edges this out. Cleveland plus one and a half is a good wager here because it's supposed to be low scoring anyway, and Cleveland might even win. There's only eight innings for Connor Pilkington this season. I don't have last season Connor Pilkington stats. Tougher game to play, but Cleveland plus one and a half would be the outcome. I'd say low scoring outcome where Cleveland maybe wins but covers one and a half. Philadelphia Atlanta likes Atlanta by score, not as much by margin though. Says they can win a game 4-3 with Kyle Wright pitching. Yeah, could happen. Um, line is actually okay, but they're all the way down here at the 10th pick because the margin isn't great. So it's a pick em game, but it says Atlanta's the team that you pick them. But yeah, tougher game to play there. Kansas City and Minnesota, number four pick of the day, Minnesota. Devin Smelter has pitched really well this year. Daniel Lynch, not so much. Kansas City have a team not, not playing well. So Minnesota, a big pick that Minnesota covers, which they haven't been doing as much at home lately, but they definitely win. So taking them to win is, if they ever fall behind to Kansas City, you're going to see me betting Minnesota to win. Milwaukee and St. Louis. Slight. Okay, no margin at all on this game. And a barely score outscoring Milwaukee. So it's a low scoring game here is what it thinks. Tough game to play though. Boston and the White Sox, number one pick of the day is Boston because of Dallas Keuchel's ERA and pitching this year. Yep, so Boston runs and Boston winning and Boston covering. What's going to get focused on? Toronto and the Angels, number five pick of the day. Says the Angels can put up runs against the CR, six ERA, Hyunjin Ryu. He is 1-0. Oh. He's got a high ERA, though. Okay, the Angels fight margins over 10%. Angels to win, maybe not covering because they're at home. It does predict almost three runs for Toronto. And this ERA might be a little distorted. If you use last year, then this game is five to three. Okay, so think of it that way. But the Angels to win are on there. Dodgers surprisingly are not in the top 10% margin. They're only at a 3% margin against an Arizona team that's better than you think this year. And they've played some bad teams, but they've also won some games. They've shown they can win. So it says they lose this game by projected score and by margin slightly, but it's not worth the line. And they don't cover. That's 4.3 minus 3.2 is less than 1.5. It's 1.1. So supposedly the Dodgers do not cover the 1.5 in this game. Every time I say something, the opposite thing happens. But there you go. So it's a barely a Dodgers win, but tough to bet. Texas and Oakland wants you to bet against Oakland since Texas can do it. Texas has been playing some good teams recently, including Houston. The line is okay. They're on the road. They only put up four runs here, though, so it's a low-scoring game that Texas can win, but its margin is just below 10. So, all right, so backing up, what are we focusing on and why? Yeah, because you're, you're, you're going up against Keuchel here, and that's why you go Boston. Everything up here was fine. I was a little sketchy on the Angels as much because you can see how these lines are better so it's really these three have actually have good lines and another one that has good lines that was way down here oh yeah the over in this game the over in the colorado washington game over eight and then these three and i don't want to say no to a game over mm. you, you just spread them out I, i'll end up talking forever but there's so much to play that you might lose one in here, so you want to have combinations, all kinds of stuff. Because I think on a day like today where there's 11 games, looking at this list, uh, I really expect to hit these. I think you hit one of these for some reason, not both. I think you're going to hit, you're either going to go one and two or two and one on your underdogs. I don't love all the underdogs. Texas probably wins there. 
that that's the one to take. It's the highest one at eight point seven. You know, really look at this margin. This matters. Like like look at how because if you see like yesterday, all right, yesterday. We only have these games above 10%. Only one of them won. Some weird losses, but, like, it can, it, I don't know. That's not a great day to show. But here, you see things really start to break up, and you can you can be counting on things that are usually higher up like that. Right? Like, look at that. Here you've got, you see how the number matters. Like, you start to have your losses further down except on really bad days, it's not always consistent, but there you go, lots of wins. You know, you have more losses down here. You see something like this, like you only lose two out of the top seven, but then you start to really have trouble. So when you compare that to today, because it matters, these are the ones to focus on. Don't count on anything down here and don't complain if you lose down here. Complain if you lose up here, really complain if you lose on these three. So I think there should be a three-team parlay with these three, given these margins are all over 15%. Boston, the Yankees, and the Cubs. And maybe that means taking the run line on all of them to start out the game to get even better lines, because they're all supposed to do it. They're all away. Another reason they might actually cover that. There's so many different ways to think about it. I can just talk forever, but we don't have forever. So good luck, everyone. May all your picks be winning, especially these three.